Hey, today we're going to quickly go over the basics of auto layout. If you don't know anything about auto layout, this is good. Uh, this will be great for you. If you do, uh, you might learn something. Otherwise, I will be putting out an advanced auto layout tutorial uh, in the coming time. So to start out, we have a square. I've just created a rectangle. It's nothing crazy. Uh, now, if we want to add auto layout to that, we can do one of two things. We can grab our frame tool or hit F, drag it around there so it's contained in a frame, and then you can click plus on auto layout. Or if you want to do the shortcut, you can click your rectangle and go shift A, and that will place it already inside an auto layout frame. Now, just so we can see what's going on, I will add a, just a red, red color to this so that you can see our frame with the auto layout is red. Um, so the first thing is there's about auto layout is um, there's the, the orientation here. And it's pretty self-explanatory, but you can see that whatever it's set to is also mirrored in the layer panel. So if I were to change this to center top, this is now centered. So you can see here, just clicking around aligns the objects within our auto layout to that particular alignment. Uh, I always use center, well I don't always use center, but center is always a good place to start. Um, the next thing you'll see here is uh, we've got fixed and fixed. So if this is the outermost auto layout, um, you've got a choice of hug or fixed width. Fixed width means that it's set, you've got numbers here, 290 by 167. You can change them and uh, it basically functions like a frame would. Hug, you can set the width to hug, it means it will fit itself to the width of the elements within it. Same with the height. And then the space around it is determined by the padding. So you have your horizontal padding, which you can scale up and down, and your vertical padding. And then you can also click this uh, individual padding here, and you can change just the left, just the top, so on and so forth. And you can start actually playing with individual paddings, uh, and that there's a variety of uses for that. You'll see it in some of my other tutorials. But um, for the most part, people just use uh, the two, horizontal and vertical. And you'll see, because I've played with the individual, it's put a comma between the... Uh, between the values and if you keep scaling that it'll scale those which is actually pretty cool it'll scale those relatively so you can see that the numbers change um, relative to what I actually entered them so if I had a huge bottom padding it would always keep that bottom padding relative to the top padding it's kind of cool and if you want to override it just throw one number in The next part is um, you'll see that there is these direction arrows. So that's handy. Um, so the one thing I'll say about auto layout is it's really good because it allows you to lay your elements out without having to manually move them and position them. So if I was to duplicate this, just Command D, it automatically expanded my frame for me. Okay, I've got another element. You can see here my direction is set to down. This is the space between elements, so I can ramp that up or down. Uh, and then if I switch this to the side, then now our auto layout goes horizontally as opposed to vertically. Pretty cool stuff. The other thing we can get into a little bit here is what happens when you start playing with the sizing and spacing of the items inside. So inside you've got fixed or fill. So this is set to fixed, and this the height is set to fixed. And the reason it does that is because our panel, our auto layout, outermost one, is expanding with the elements inside. Now if we were to change this to, let's say we'll go fill and fill for both. What it does is you can see here it says width set to fixed for frame 41. So it automatically, we can't have hug 
this set to hug and the inside set to fill because they cancel each other out. It's like setting to infin infinities almost. Um, so now that this is set to fixed, if I was to scale this, these elements are set to fill the space within the auto layout. So that is pretty cool. So there's a variety of uses for this, but it will scale the elements accordingly. So even if you adjust your spacing, it'll start to scale the elements inside if they're set to fill. And if you go back and you set these to fixed and fixed, this automatically sets this to fix as well. Um, but now you have the ability to change it to hug. So now we can adjust these individually and the panel will adjust. And now the, the fun thing you can do is you can actually, if you want to set this to fixed, this might be getting into too much, but you can set this one to fixed and fixed and this one to we'll fix and we'll give this one fill. So again, that sets this outer component to uh, a fixed height but it's still hugging the contents. But now if I was to scale this, only this one scales because it's set to fill. So this is kind of cool if you want to do like, you know, a heading and then you've got an image and then you could set like another one underneath. Uh, it's, so what I did there is I actually used the arrow key to move it down in the stack. You can see in the layer panel. So if this was maybe a button, let's give it some rounded corners and shrink it. You could have it so that this element fills the space in between. So if this headline was only like that, then you'd have an image that filled that and your card would stay the same height. Alternately, you would set this to hug contents and then whatever the content of these changes, it adjusts your card height. Um, so the cool thing about that is you can set um, some of your other cards if you have multiple cards in the same auto layout you can set their height to fill uh, and they'll fill in the space um, you know within the between the other items uh, what I mean by that is if we set these to so let's say we take this, we go that way. We set these both to fill and fill to get them even. So if I have an auto layout here and I have a card, right, we'll set this to hug. And I have a card that fills with content and it gets this big and I have another card that doesn't have as much content. I can either align my outer container to the top or if I want this to fill the space, so there's a weird white space, then I can take this and I can set that to fill. And we'll get that into, into a little more detail when we start nesting auto, auto layouts in the advanced tutorial. Um, but one of the main things that I like to use auto layout for is for doing the screen layouts for any of the, um, the products I'm working on. So if you were to set this as your, as your screen, so say you're doing mobile, you do 390, you set that top part to hug, you set your spacing. So now any other element you add in your design, no matter how big, how small, you don't have to adjust your page size if you keep messing around with things. Uh, and then you can actually get in and start doing uh, auto layout changes within components. So if this was set to a different state where it was larger, when you swap the state, it would automatically adjust your layout. So you have it. Auto layout is very powerful, and we'll get into that in, in a, an advanced auto layout tutorial. But the key things here are you can do individual padding. Um, actually, one thing I did forget to mention is if you wanted to do fixed, and then this is also fixed, but you wanted them to kind of fill in the space. So I guess you'd say like, if this was going to be a nav bar and you had your logo and maybe a button, we'll just set this to hug, hug, 
I'll stretch this out now. And you want your logo over here and your button over here. You can actually go to these three dots. So I'd set it aligned to top left. And you can choose spacing mode packed, which is exactly what it is now, or it'll adjust the spacing in between and put the elements far apart. And then there's some other elements around like aligning text to the baseline. And Figma does a very good job of explaining this in their, their previews. Um, so yeah, you can set things to spaced between or pack them in. And then if you were to set this to fill, it'll actually push this one over and you can almost achieve that same effect. So there you go, auto layout. It's very, this is a very basic run through, um, but I think it covered all the elements. Uh, there will be more coming. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, check out my other videos, like subscribe and, uh, check out my Patreon account where we'll go into crazy experimental stuff with Figma. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.